Hey guys, Sean James here, and I am in the woods today just scouting for a winter camping spot. My wife is talking about actually joining me on a couple of uh, winter camping trips this year, or maybe one, maybe one night, we'll see. But um, I thought, uh, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes from the house, good place to start. Lots of crown land around here, public land. So I'm looking for uh, a nice spot by water. I'm, I'm hoping to find a little stream coming out of one of these ponds or out of a uh, out of one of the small lakes back in here. So this is pretty typical of the area. What I'm hoping is to get either south orientation or southeast orientation halfway up a hill so when the cold air settles at night it settles down in the valley below us and doesn't uh, settle in uh, in our camp. So that would be ideal. going to be lots of firewood up here I think. There'll be lots of pine for starting a fire and should be lots of dead oak for a nice hardwood coal fire for warmth, for steady heat and for cooking. So let's see what I can find. I've uh, brought my gun along. It is hunting season. It's deer hunting season for another day up here. Two days I guess. And um, it's, if you're small game hunting you need to wear hunter orange so this vest and the hat that I've got in my pocket has to be on. My backpack I've got an orange vest on that as well and even if I wasn't hunting I'd need that for safety but uh, during a, a big game season you need to uh, even when you're small game hunting you need to be wearing this hunter orange which is a good thing and so far I actually have seen two grouse I should have shot one that I just spooked off this ridge here it's behind a tree and I wasn't 100% on what it was although I did hear it as I was approaching and hear it chirping away uh, but I, anyway, anyway, I did get one back at the truck, so I shot a grouse just as I got out. That was coming to the gravel road to uh, to pick up some grit. So I think I found a pretty good place to have a winter camp. Got this pond here, which is going to freeze solid pretty deep, actually. There might be a couple little outlets or little drops between ponds at the beaver dams, or I can get some running water. And uh, you know, at this time of year. Be a cool spot to have a fall camp because there's actually quite a few ducks just flew out of here. Some of them might fly back in here. I'll keep my eyes peeled. It's a great spot for a fire. I got some flat rocks here, got uh, blocks on either side. Dug down here, and there's actually rocks over top of the roots, so there's no tree roots coming underneath here to catch on fire. And I'm going to take the extra precaution of cooking on a, on a rock as well. Since I'm going to have a quick hot fire here, I'm just going to use, or going to get it started at least with pine, since there's lots of that around. Keep that fire low. low. I'm trying not to, uh, I don't want it to spark too much because there's a lot of pine needles on the ground, so I'll just get it started with this. Then I'll grab a couple of uh, oak branches, lots of oak around here. Get something that sparks it a little, a little bit less. Look at that perfect tree <laughs> right by camp. Got this huge oak tree. Might not even need the saw. Pretty far gone, some of it, but lots of good stuff too. That's not too punky. That should be more than enough to cook those ribs. Not a bushcraft knife. I'm not going to carry a separate knife just to do little bushcrafty stuff, so it still works. Better for splitting and actually with the back of that knife splitting bone, which I found pretty useful on bear and moose. But for this, it does just an adequate job. Gets the job done and they'll get this fire going. I've got these ribs here and because I butcher my own animals I typically grind up about 90% of a deer. I cut a few steaks and, and I keep the tenderloins and the organs separate 
and then the ribs because I don't use a saw to cut the bones. I usually debone everything. The ribs I usually leave whole like this and I just cook them over a fire. I'm not a big fan of roasted or braised venison fat in the oven, but I like it charred over a fire like this, especially with keg spice on it. I already had these ribs with me and they were thawing out, so I'm not going to cook that gross. I'll cook that maybe tomorrow and uh, show you how to clean it and put that out in another video in the next week or two. You know, I rarely actually use a grill. I have that nice Purcell uh, Traveler's Grill and those stainless uh, rods that you can use for cooking on, but I just rarely ever use it. Even if I'm using a pot, I put it on the fire, but I find ribs or meat cooked like this directly on a rock or on a stick is my favorite way to cook it. Perfectly done. Yeah. That's venison ribs from the deer that I shot a couple weeks ago. Last last day or two days before the uh, bow season closed temporarily for the shotgun hunt. Mm, that is really good. Best way to cook deer or venison, in my opinion, especially ribs that are really fatty. Find at home, cooked in the oven, or even on the barbecue, it's just, it's just not the same as having it on a fire. A little bit of keg spice on that, and all that fat that I didn't want to trim off and put into the ground. Mm-mm. So thanks for watching again. I really appreciate your support and I hope you're enjoying what you're watching here. If you do, please subscribe to the channel and I will be putting out another video this week.